Thank you very much for inviting me for your event, and I'm I'm very happy that I've I have the chance to speak to your audience and uh, do something fun with AWS and um, and potentially do this really cool workshop with you. So cool, let's stop. We can kick it off. Excellent. So um, I believe that you can um bring up my presentation because I in fact do have a really tiny presentation to kind of preface what I'm doing. Um, so um, today we're going to be doing a workshop on how to build a serverless application with AWS CDK or Cloud Development Kit. But um, but, but before start we actually we start actually doing some code. I'm gonna uh, just explain why CDK exists and why should you care about CDK or what am I gonna talk about in general, right? So let's kick it off. Um, if I can click on my PowerPoint, yes, like that. Um, but where do we start? Where do we start in our adventure when it comes to AWS Cloud Development Kit? Well, we'd start with this magical thing that is called a DevOps engineer. Now, what is a DevOps engineer? It's difficult to tell. Nobody really knows what it is. Everybody likes to call themselves a DevOps engineer, but um, yeah, we will not get into the discussion what that exactly is. But this starts with you an engineer, a person who wants to build a very complex system out there, you know, with all the bells and whistles, all all uh, multiple accounts, multiple things, multiple Lambda functions, cloud-based, on-premises-based, all of these very complicated things that, hey, if you would go ahead and just click a bunch of buttons, yeah, of course you can do that, but um, it's complicated, right? Um, a lot of things have to happen here in order for this to, well, be successful. And of course, you can do all of this through the wonders of uh, infrastructure as code, right? So that's something that we're going to be mentioning today and talking why is this important now? Can this actually help you? So infrastructure as code is this thing that enables you to write or describe your infrastructure through, well, code, right? And that infrastructure can be basically created by a bunch of API calls handled by some framework out there, leaving you with a lot of time and well, potential to do something much, much better, right? So, and 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 if you ever heard about infrastructure as code on AWS, you most likely heard about AWS CloudFormation or uh, Terraform or maybe some Pulumi. And those are great and they're amazing. And CloudFormation is of course the base of all of those things. Well, most of those things, um, but you know, sometimes doing things in JSON or YAML can be problematic. It's, it's th those are, great object notations or, uh, or markup languages, but sometimes you're just missing um, some superpowers that generic programming languages have. Or maybe maybe, maybe your team or yourself are just this god in Python, right? You can do all the things with, with Python. You, you, can, uh, you can, as you say, import a module for flight and just fly with Python. Um, you have this already existing skill set within your company, uh, existing tools, and these tools actually help you do all of these things. Why not actually use those tools, those skills, the knowledge you have, the community you have to build your infrastructure as code instead of doing it through JSON, right? Well, you can do that, of course, now with AWS Cloud Development Kit, as AWS Cloud Development Kit allows you to build infrastructure through generic programming languages. But before I continue, you may be wondering who is this bald person and why is he screaming at the camera? Let me introduce myself. My name is Darko Mesaros. I am a developer advocate at AWS. I am based in Berlin, Germany. Actually, right now, I'm currently in my childhood home back in Serbia. I'm originally from Serbia, hence uh, the multiple ways of spelling my name. Um, I've been with AWS for the last five, six, five years now. Yeah, five years. Um, and I've, I've actually, a fun fact, I've changed five countries in the last eight years um, been moving quite a bunch around. And if you want to get more content on me, I do a lot more video and Twitch content. Do check out my my, my social medias right now here. Um, and, uh, and yeah, uh, catch up on all the all the tech stuff I do there as well. And you will see a lot of infrastructure code coming from me because I'm a bit of a fan. <laughs> but okay, let's actually talk about what is infrastructure code. I, I mentioned this a few times, but let me illustrate this. In the past, we would have things like servers, racks, things we would mount on 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 on, well, on those racks and and plug in and configure operating systems and and do it a long time i used to provision servers and it would take like months to provision 500 servers just because of the effort you have to do yeah that's not ideal right it takes a lot of time 
but when you think about the cloud, how do you how do you vision envision infrastructure? Right? Do you envision it like this, or do you do it more like this? Yes, this is the cloud. This is everything you do on a cloud is just an API call. So basically, infrastructure as code is the default. Infrastructure is code on the cloud, and hence we can use infrastructure as code to basically help us by converting that little template file into actual infrastructure and give us the ability to actually have an infrastructure that's predictable, repeatable, and well, easy to easy to deploy. Also, it gives you the ability to actually use the existing tool sets, tool chains, and experience within your company to build your, um, well, camera goes and back. I know what happened, give me a second. It's the, the camera. Um, I'll make this work, give me a second. Um, my camera, um, thanks to um, thanks to something, is apparently is going to go away for every half an hour. So um, if I if I go away for a second, I'll be back in a moment. So uh, please do ignore that. It's just the limitations of a camera. Uh, okay, so back to this. So yeah, it gives you the ability to actually use the existing tool chain tool sets to build your infrastructure. And finally, replicating infrastructure across different environments, development staging is also very key and very difficult to do without infrastructure as code. Hence, it is really great to do it um, through IAC. With that being said, um, let's actually talk about Cloud Development Kit, the main star of today. The main star of today is the AWS Cloud Development Kit. Now, this has actually come from, from, the, from the point I mentioned before. Like, of course, you can do things in YAML. Of course, you can do things in JSON. Those are great object notations and markup languages. They work great. But if you have experience in-house, if you have all this thing, um, all the tool chains, all the communities within your company to help you build stuff on the cloud, why not use those languages, right? Why reinvent the wheel and do something in an object notation? So Cloud Development Kit basically gets you, gives you the ability to shorten this learning, learning curve with CDK by utilizing this already existing experience and using any of these uh, uh, supported languages like Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, C Sharp, F Sharp, and Golang should potentially come soon. But um, yeah, fingers crossed on that. Um, so it's 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 and, and it's an ever growing community. We'll see so many people talk about CDK that it's so cool, it's so great. It's just uh, I love it out there. People keep on making custom constructs and libraries to help you actually build those things out. So wonderful things happening um yeah and, and it looks like this right and i'll show you more code more code as we go along but it's a and this is this is a perfect example of like uh, javascript code it's just normal code that helps you model your infrastructure through that code so uh, but as i mentioned before cdk actually relies on cloud formation so cdk is in essence is just a cli tool that takes your um code that takes your JavaScript, your TypeScript, your Python code, converts it to a CloudFormation template, and then lets CloudFormation handle the rest. So we didn't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to AWS um, CDK to have CDK run the API calls for you or make all of those changes for you because we already have a perfectly functioning system, which is AWS CloudFormation, to create those things. CDK is just this thing in between to help you write less complicated code. But with that being said, this is a workshop after all, right? So let's actually build some code. And I'm gonna actually be using a workshop that I built on my GitHub page. And I know we are relatively um, okay on time. I will not have time to go through details on each little step in this uh, workshop. Hence, I have this QR code leading, to, leading you to my GitHub page where I have a lovely readme file on that github page that actually takes you through the entire workshop and everything i will be doing today so if you want to get more details the actual code i will be using make sure to snap this qr code and go to my github page i hope if if you if you don't have anything to snap this code with just search my name darko mesarosh on github it's my top starred repository uh, and you should be able to find it so it's yeah um it's, it's relatively simple with that being said uh, let's actually jump into the command line and let's build us some serverless cdk and yeah i haven't, I haven't mentioned what serverless is but uh yeah serverless is um a really neat way to um to run stuff on the cloud so it is not just lambda functions it's basically an operating model on the cloud how can you properly um run things and and well in a, in a very serverless way but we'll get to that so today the goal of today is to actually build a simple hello world serverless application with aws cdk the idea is that i will demonstrate 
couple of the core concepts of AWS CDK through this thing. As I'm going to be doing my example in TypeScript, uh, just because my README file is actually written for TypeScript. But again, you can literally do the same thing in any language. I have an example for Python in my repository, so you can do that as well. Um, um, but all the concepts apply to both Java and C Sharp and just a tooling is potentially a bit different. I'm going to be using the Vim text editor, but you can actually use whatever text editor you want. Use the best one out there, which is Vim. Uh, and and yeah, and, and you need a command line utility. So perfect. Let's kick it off. I'm going to be, um, I'm going to have to um, kind of move a bit around because I have a laptop in front of me just so I can just so I can be positioned centrally. Thank you very much for adjusting my camera. I'm going to be trying to look at the camera, look at the screen and look at my me typing. So um, um, please do bear that in mind. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, you need to go ahead and install AWS CDK. So that is the first thing you will have to do because um, we need something to run stuff with. So installing AWS CDK should be relatively simple. You need to have Node available. So by doing npm, actually, because we want to install CDK globally, sudo npm install dash g at uh, AWS CDK. So basically, this is gonna this is the things we're gonna be installing. This is gonna be this is gonna install the um, the package globally. And did I do my password? I did. So um, with this being done, it takes a moment or so, but again, um, you will have to be using NPM for this. So make sure you have NPM installed. That's the requirement because um, CDK was written for that. It uses, I'm not going to get into details, but uses uses JSII for like uh, translation, but we have some time for some other time for that. Excellent. Let's create a directory called, uh, what are we going to call it? Uh, we're going to call it, uh, buh, buh, buh. what did I name it here? So I can just keep on in the same um, same vein. So I am going to call it uh, hello serverless, I believe. That's how I call it. Um, give me a second. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to be copy pasting some code. Uh, so I, yeah, let's do hello serverless. Hello serverless. Hello serverless. Cool. Let's go into hello serverless and let's CDK init. By the way, I hope the code is large enough. Let me actually just increase it just a tad bit. So just so people can see. So running CDK init and then uh, dash dash language equals TypeScript. So basically I'm telling CDK to initialize the current working directory um, with the language called, with the language TypeScript. If I would be doing Python or Java or C Sharp here, I can, but I'm going to be doing TypeScript in this case. So run that. And this is actually going to run NPM and install all the required packages, all the things I need to um, get started with CDK. It's going to create all the scaffolding for me, uh, all the all the lovely all the lovely little things for my application, um, basically that I can, I can start writing some CDK code. <clears throat> Excellent. Uh, let me do that. Well, this is, this is running. Let me have a look. Perfect. Um, so one of the things you also have to do, uh, now I don't have to do this because I already did done this, but if you're running CDK for the first time, you need to run CDK bootstrap. Uh, this will actually bootstrap your database account for CDK. It will set up some metadata, some S3 bucket, all the little things CDK needs to actually work with your database account. If you have already not used CDK before within your AWS account, within your region, you need to do this. So you have to have AWS CLI installed or have the appropriate credential set and you need to run CDK bootstrap. Now I don't have to because it well it, it works. <laughs> so excellent. Let me clear this out. Um, perfect. Let's kick it off. Vim dot. Okay, we're gonna start with our hello serverless stack file. So this is basically gonna be our um, application. This is gonna this is gonna be where we actually define our infrastructure code, right? This is where we're going to be creating our Lambda functions, our DynamoDB tables, and our uh, API gateways. So this is this is going to be the main point of what we're going to be doing. So <clears throat> to get started, uh, we are going to actually go ahead and um, install a few things. So to, to work with, for example, if we want to create a Lambda function, so let me actually let's put some scaffolding here. So do Lambda, let's do a Hello World Lambda. We need an API gateway, and later on we're gonna be needing um, some more lambdas, right? Uh, and let's do a DynamoDB table. 
because we're going to be having a DynamoDB table to store some data in. So to do Lambda functions, we actually have to install a module for AWS Lambda. And to do that, we're, let's open up a new terminal and just run npm, um, npm install uh, at AWS CDK, CDK, no, like that, and AWS dash Lambda. So this will actually install AWS Lambda, the AWS Lambda module within this current working directory. So if I do this, um, it's gonna install this latest module and we can use it within our TypeScript um, code. So once this is happening, actually let's let's go ahead here and um, we can actually copy this entire row and import as Lambda from AWS CDK and do AWS Lambda. Perfect. So this is actually have now, we have now imported the module called Lambda, well, AWS dash Lambda as Lambda. And this is where we can actually go ahead and create our first hello world Lambda function. So let's actually call it, um, uh, let's do <laughs> const uh, welcome Lambda. This is, we're creating a, a variable that we're gonna be using to basically work with this Lambda function. And let's go ahead and create a Lambda function. New uh, Lambda dot function. And we're gonna have to do a couple of things here. Uh, this, uh, I'm gonna call it a hello handler. This is just a logical name for that Lambda function. And this is also now where we define some properties. If I do this and that, perfect. So for those of you who do not know, a Lambda function is just a simple way to run some arbitrary code on AWS. So in essence, it's a serverless compute resource where you pass it on some code. In our case, we're gonna pass it some JavaScript code and it will execute that without servers. Well, there are servers in the back, but not servers you should care of. So this is what are we gonna be defining. So uh, first thing we need to define for a Lambda, Lambda function is its runtime. Which language this Lambda function will execute the code in? So if I do runtime, uh, runtime, I need to do lambda dot runtime uh, dot node JS. I'm going to do is 10 X, right? Perfect. So this is basically telling, Hey, use node JS 10 X for the Lambda runtime. Now the code, define the code for the Lambda function. Now we can do a bunch of things here. We can actually put some inline code, but that's just not nice. Uh, if we put some inline code, this would just be messy. Um, Actually, let's for that, let's go ahead and create ourselves a, a directory here called uh, mkdir lambda. Let's go ahead and edit lambda and let's call it hello.js. So I'm, I'm going to be using a hello.js file. This is going to be a simple hello world function that just says literally hello. <laughs> so it's 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 nothing, nothing complex. Let me copy paste this because yeah, um, I don't want to type all of this out, but basically it's going to reply with hello and welcome to our serverless application. That's about it. So <laughs> nothing complex, but yeah, there we go. So this looks fine. Uh, I'm just going to replace these things with these because I don't trust them like that. Uh, perfect. So uh, going back to our other file, uh, we can actually do the following. Um, we can do lambda, lambda dot code um, dot from asset uh, and basically we're going to point it to the lambda directory now the, how it is going to know what file to take well we're going to define a handler so if i do handler uh, it's going to be basically hello dot handler what this will do is it will actually look for a dot js file uh, with the name hello and just basically use that use well this file as a handler so there you go it's because this is exporting the handler. So excellent. Um, this is our first Lambda function. And, and basically this is, this is what we need to have. This is what it does. Now, um, I'm actually going to add some features here to, to make this actually useful because this Lambda function in itself just does nothing. If I create this, it will, um, just create that Lambda function nothing else. Uh, I can actually invoke it, but let's actually add an API gateway so we can invoke it manually. So if I do an API gateway, for those of you who do not know, is a, a service that basically is a gateway, an API gateway that will connect your HTTPS traffic to your Lambda function. So I can pass a request to the HTTP gateway, uh, to the API gateway, and that re request will go to my Lambda function. So let's actually go ahead and create an API gateway. We're, we're gonna create just a single API gateway. Const API equals a new, 
aha, but we forgot something. We need to actually inst import another module for the API Gateway. To do that, I can just go install uh, API Gateway. Basically, this is I'm going to install a different module called AWS API Gateway. By hitting that, that should be fine. Um, well, that is happening. Let's go back here. Copy, paste, API, uh, API GW. I think that's how I like to call it. Uh, AWS, uh, AWS API, API Gateway. So let's create a new API Gateway. So it's going to be new API GW dot REST API. We're going to creating a, be creating a REST API. Within this context, uh, we're going to give it a, a name called Hello API. And basically, that's it. So we don't have to define anything for our API Gateway. This is going to create our API Gateway. But we need to actually integrate um, um, a Lambda integration. We need to integrate our Lambda function into this. We need to make sure that our Lambda function can actually communicate through the API Gateway. So this is something we're going to have to create, like something called the Lambda integration. Uh, so let's actually do that. And so another thing here, let's call it API hello integ is going to be new dot api uh, new api gw dot lambda integration i'm going to just say welcome lambda basically this is this is me creating that integration uh, now uh, besides this i also need to make sure to do this proper things um i need to do uh, another thing um, i actually need to create an api a resource in the api gateway for this hello function so i'm gonna say api hello API hello it's gonna be uh, another thing of basically gonna add uh, a resource to the root of the api so the api is is an object that we created here right and i'm adding adding a resource to the root basically I'm gonna do add uh, resource to the root and it's going to be just hello so basically think of it as a, as if you have your api gateway url by adding hello to the url uh, to the root we're adding adding slash hello as a resource and basically anytime you invoke that main api gateway slash hello it's going to be uh, invoking this hello world lambda function with that and finally we just need to add a method to this um, resource and, and the method is basically your post, your get, your put. So uh, add um, method, and because this is just going to be a simple uh, get method, this is just going to be us invoking. I'm going to do API hello in tech. What this says is anytime you call your, uh, your uh, get um, method on this, uh, resource on the API, on the API hello resource, uh, call the API hello integration, which is going to be basically pulling in this Lambda function. Excellent. Save this. And if I go here now, if I do npm run build, hopefully this should work. If it doesn't work, we're going to get a bunch of errors out here. So running npm run build is the thing that actually, you see, it broke. Um, it, it, it compiles the TypeScript into JavaScript, but I think I know what broke. Uh, I've uh, it's a typo. So why didn't you tell me I made a typo? Perfect. Okay, once again, npm run build. Let's give it a moment. Fingers crossed. Uh, Uh -huh. um, yeah, capital C, there we go, once more, see, you fix, you make things run by fixing errors as you do, is this what they call test-driven development? Perfect, uh, we have actually built code, um, so we have a successful, um, if I do npm run build, there should be no output. Basically, it should be running TSC or the TypeScript compiler, and there should be no output. Now, one thing we can do, we can do CDK deploy. By running CDK deploy, uh, this will actually generate all the things we need to have 
to deploy our code. So it will create the CloudFormation template. And as you can see here, it will do a lot more. So if I go here and do this and just go back a bit, you will see that there's a bunch of things happening here. So CDK is actually telling us, hey, by the way, I'm going to be creating some IAM statement changes or identity and access management changes. Are you sure you want this? So for example, it's creating a... Um, a, a um, uh, a permission to run this function, right? Uh, it's giving a permission to assume a role or uh, basically making some policy changes. It's telling you, hey, I'm doing this. Are you sure you want to do this? Uh, I'm going to say, yep, that's what I want. And well, bam, this is actually going to create a cloud formation change set. And um, one of the things that you will see here, and I'm going to bring this up in a moment, um, is that um, a cloud formation um, Cloud formation thing will happen right now. We can see that a hello serverless stack is being created. So this entire stack right now is being created by a. Uh, um, by AWS CDK. So CDK is not doing this themselves. It's actually creating. Uh, relatively complex CloudFormation template from just that little bit of code that I've created, and it's creating my entire stack. Um, you can see all the events happening here. You can see like uh, creation of the API gateway or the API, all of those things. So, um, and, and if we go back to our terminal, you can see the output of that event happening here. Now, um, hence, since I have 10 minutes left, um, I'm going to be showing a couple of other things while this is happening. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to can add more things, how you can add some additional bells and whistles to your application just to make it that much better. For example, how can we have both um, development and staging environments with our sing simple serverless application? So I'll, I'll show you how to do that, how you can actually use, utilize um, uh, parameters within your templates. But before we go that, we can actually take our URL here Take it like that, copy, clear, and do HTTP like that, and just make sure to do the hello endpoint, well, bam, and we should hopefully see hello and welcome to our serverless application. That's it. This is our serverless application being deployed right now, and it's just a hello world, but it's we can we can make it as <laughs> as complex as we want. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and, and, and do something more. So I'm going to open up a, a different file now. I'm going to open up a file uh, in the bin directory called um, uh, hello serverless.ts. Now this file is the one that defines our application. Um, instead of um, just defining a simple application, as, as you can see here, it basically says, hello, create a new stack from this uh, serverless stack, the, the, the file we added. But let's actually do a bit more. Let's actually um, add some potential um, parameters right so we can do we can do the same thing here so i'm going to be actually cre instead of creating a single stack i'm going to give it the ability to create two stacks so i'm going to copy paste this entire thing like so and i'm going to go ahead here and just do o and v um cdk hello serverless cdk stack uh just want to make sure that okay uh, because i'm copying pasting thing here copy pasting things here i'm going to make sure that they work that they look the like, excellent. Uh, I can just delete this. So now, as you can see, I have the ability to create two different stacks. There's the prod stack and there's the staging stack. The difference here is that we're sending a flag called prod true to the prod stack and the prod equals false to the staging stack. And also we're defining a region. Now I can change the region for this to be something else and it will, CDK will actually deploy my stack in a different region, but I'm, I'm gonna keep it all in the US now just, just to make sure it works. So what can we do with this prod flag true? Um, well, not break it, but uh, yeah. What can we do with this prod flag true? Well, we can actually go ahead in, inside of our um, inside of our template and um, let's actually add more things to it. So uh, let me find the thing I need to copy paste um, and I'm gonna actually add more things. So mm -hmm, let me look at my code. Is this okay? API gateway, this all looks fine. I'm gonna add a few more Lambda functions here. Um, uh, and I'm also gonna add some tables. So let's actually go ahead and create a, create a DynamoDB table. I wanna create a DynamoDB table uh, at the top. So let's do that. And it's gonna be simple. So the creating a DynamoDB table is very, very simple. So uh, let's actually, I'm, I'm gonna again, copy some code like that. Make this nicer. Um, 
Move, please. Thank you. Perfect. So we're creating a table called new DynamoDB table. It's going to be called people. Uh, partition key is going to be something. Table name is going to be something. Read capacity is going to be something. And billing capacity is going to be something. So we're defining some properties to this DynamoDB table. Like before, we need to import this because we need to install um, uh, DynamoDB. Uh, npm install. Well, we can just do this. DynamoDB. We're running that. I will install DynamoDB. Um, one of the things you can see here that it's we are actually missing things. Like, what's the table name? What is this variable? Well, um, thanks to thanks to um, the the prod or no prod thing, we actually do do some simple logic in our code. What I did here is check it out. So, I actually just make sure that the properties that are being passed to the stack is it prod or no prod. If it's prod, set these variables. If it's not prod, set these variables, right? So basically I'm telling the stack, hey, if you receive the prod equals true, make sure that the DynamoDB write capacity is 200. The name of the API is this one. The table name is this one. And, and some Lambda variables are in concurrency are these ones, right? So those things are gonna be defined. Um, one thing I also need to define, I need to define an interface because uh, to this piece of code, I need to define an interface so it can actually receive those uh, properties available. And I'm going to be doing something like that. Uh, not that. Oops. Uh, props is going to be env stack props. Excellent. So this will enable us to have um, um, these, uh, these parameters or variables assigned to our code. So finally, let me actually do more, th one, a couple more things, and I'm going to have to do a, bu a, bu a bunch more pasting as well. Uh, where's my API gateway? Uh, ah, yes. So instead of having a fixed API gateway name like I have here called Hello API, I'm, just, I'm actually going to go ahead and change it into, uh, what is it? I'm going to change it into doo -doo -doo, API gateway name because it's going to be the thing here. Perfect. Save like that. Um, CDK destroy. Let me actually uh, CDK destroy. Can I do CDK destroy now? No, it will fail because uh, I don't have the I don't have the things defined. So I need to I need to go ahead and, and, and work with this. Uh, oh, it doesn't know what DynamoDB is. So import DynamoDB from AWS uh, AWS DynamoDB. Perfect. This should work. Excellent. Now, finally, let's add some more Lambda functions. Uh, this is actually going to be relatively simple. Um, basically, it's going to be the same thing as before. I am just um, uh, adding more Lambda functions to this. These are additional Lambda functions that are going to be writing and reading from the DynamoDB table. Um, and also their integrations, right? So these are integrations of that Lambda, of those uh, DynamoDB, of the, those Lambda functions into the API gateway. And last but not least, it's not DynamoDB table, it's DynamoDB table permissions. Uh, and this is also the beauty of AWS CDK is that to, to manage the complicated hot mess that is permissions on AWS, to give a Lambda permission in normal times, you actually have to create an IAM role and add specific permissions to it. On CDK, you can just do this. Basically, table, grant, read data, or grant, read, write data to a specific Lambda function. Simple as that. Uh, and this is th these are the things that actually sold, sold me so much on, on, on Lambda. Um, I love it. Saving this, uh, I also need to edit a file called create user.js uh, with it. Actually, you know, um, Lambda create you create user.js. So these files are, are actually just the actual Lambda functions. They're not too important. Um, these these are these lambda functions create specific. Uh, no, these lambda functions create specific uh, um, users or read users from uh, the from the um, DynamoDB table. So let me open up this again and uh, like that and do edit lambda and uh, what is the other one is read user.js. Copy, bam, bam, perfect. Save that, um, perfect. And let's actually go to this file again and let me describe what we did here. So first of all, we have imported 
modules for Lambda function, API Gateway, and DynamoDB. We have exposed some properties. So those, those properties can be set to the specific stack from the application. So if I go to uh, my application, if I do, no, come on. If I do my serverless thing, if I if I define this property to my application, it can it can be accepted within my stack. So the product one. Uh, then, de depending on the value of that uh, variable, we actually define: Hey, if prod is set to true, set these variables. If they're not, set these variables. Simple as that. Um, we have created a DynamoDB table. A DynamoDB table is our NoSQL table offering. It's also serverless. It's, it's really great to just quickly store some data. So it's a simple table uh, with some information get it, gotten, gotten from those properties like the table name and the read capacity and the billing mode. And then um, lastly, we worked on some Lambda functions. The, the, the one you actually see me write by, hand, write by hand is my Hello World Lambda. This is just this thing that says hello from a serverless application. We also created an API gateway. Basically, API gateway is the interface between you and the Lambda function itself that actually sends your HTTP or REST requests to uh, those Lambda functions. So this is the simple integration between my Lambda function, the Hello World Lambda function, and the API gateway here. And then lastly, we've added more Lambda functions. We actually added two additional Lambda functions, um, which read and write things to... to um, to the DynamoDB table. The only difference between um, the these Lambda functions and the Hello World one, besides, of course, the code, uh, is that I have actually defined some reserved concurrency executions. It's basically some some things you would set up in your like production-grade Lambda functions, just, just so you can have reserved execution concurrency. And I'm also passing some environment variables. And those environment variables, in essence, just contain uh, the table name of, of, of my application. So uh, table name of my DynamoDB table. OK. And also doing some. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Uh, I didn't know this it was gone. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, but yeah, the code is more important than my face in, in, in general. Um, so um, basically, additionally, having these um, uh, API integrations like the same as before to these two additional Lambda functions, creating new resource called called read and creating a new resource called create. Um, and creating a, a a method for post in the in the in the create one, and last but not least is the DynamoDB table permissions. Just by giving the giving the permissions to these Lambda functions to write and read something from that DynamoDB table. Excellent. Okay, so let's try something. Let's go ahead and let's do CDK deploy, or actually CDK uh, no npm run build because we need to compile our our TypeScript code now. Things actually might break. I'm not really sure. Uh, <laughs> it, oh, it works. Excellent. So CDK LS. If I run CDK LS, CDK LS will actually list the stacks I have. Now, it has prod and staging as available stacks. Uh, if I do CDK deploy staging, it will deploy my stack in the staging environment. Basically, it will deploy the stack with the staging property set. So click that. It's going to go ahead and create, basically run the creation of my staging stack. One of the things you will see here on CloudFormation, now if I go back here, you will see if I refresh, there's going to be a new stack called staging. Now, this old one, actually, actually, actually delete this one because I don't need it. Um, the staging stack is being created. And again, there's a bunch of things going to be created, a bunch of Lambda functions, a bunch of... Um, 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 well, well, a single DynamoDB table and a single uh, API gateway but with all the configurations. And in a moment or so, once this finishes, we will be able to see um, the staging one that being deployed. And then when we want to deploy production, I can just do CDK deploy prod, and it will do the same thing. It will create an additional stack just with the production parameters. Again, everything I've done here right now is available on that GitHub page. So if you want to go check it out, it's available on, uh, I think I even have it here. If I do GitHub, um, github.com, and then you go to my my, my GitHub page here, um, you will see all of this thing, everything I talked about, uh, basically defined within this lovely readme file uh, that, well, says a lot of things. <laughs> if, if you didn't want to listen to me, 
it's here. Uh, the working code is here. I actually made sure that it works. I've updated the version of, of the latest uh, CDK version to TypeScript. So you can have all of this code here. But if you want to do Python, there's also an option with Python, um, which is very, very similar. Um, uh, it, it, it just uses the Python language in this case to, to do the same thing, but yeah, uh, in a different language. So um, if, if, if you prefer Python, there it is. So um, let's actually have a look where this is going. It's currently 24 out of 28, 27 out of 28 uh, resources, and it's done. Excellent. Let me copy this link. Can I copy? I cannot. I can just do that. Um, like so. And then HTTP like that. And hello. Will this work? It wouldn't. Nope. Um, clear HTTP one. Hello. Let's see if the hello not help. That's going to fail. Uh, hello. I should get a hello and a welcome for a serverless application. Let's actually try ahead and go and post something to this. So if I do HTTP post, pass in this and do create, and then pass on like a proper create string by passing in name Darko. Basically, I have a table that you can create your name, your age, and location. So I'm going to do name equals Darko, uh, Darko, and then and uh, age equal 32, and then location equal Berlin. Or actually, this is Subotica. Subotica is my hometown, um, where I am right now. If I do this, hopefully... Famous last words. Um, yes, I got nothing out. So I got a blank response, which means it has been successful, of course. If I do HTTP just without anything, if I do like that and do read and then pass in the name, name Darko, and do that, I should be getting a JSON object back, which is not the one. It's not equals, it's this one. I should be getting an H, a JSON object back basically of age, location, and name. As you can see, I have been able to do this right now um, with some code in the last, well, 45 minutes <laughs> or so. And yeah, um, all of this code is available on that GitHub page if you want to check it out. Um, uh, and as the last thing, this is the QR code if you want to go to my name. But um, with that being said, um, I'm open up for any questions you may have. Um, and thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Darko, for being a part of our event. So first of all, uh, in, I want to say thank you, not because of the uh, fact that you have a brilliant beard as I am, but yeah, your, <laughs> your, mm. yeah, your speech was really brilliant and very interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, I think not only for me. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Colleagues, please uh, tell me if you have any questions uh, into the chat and I will put passing them through and uh, Dark will answer them. Exactly. And if you have any questions that you do not wish to be answered live on air, feel free to reach to me uh, out to me on social media and whatever, and I'm happy to help and answer any questions that you may deem not uh, airworthy. But yeah. <laughs> but yes, that has been my code and I'm very happy with my code. Um, <laughs> So yeah, again, uh, oh, by the way, if you want this all to go away, you can do CDK, uh, CDK destroy, um, and then staging. And it's very cathartic that you run CDK destroy and it feels so good when you remove your infrastructure and you don't have to pay for it at all. So, well, bam, it's gone in a couple of seconds. So <laughs> one of the added benefits of infrastructure is code. So, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, uh, so Darko, I, I can't see uh, questions up to now. Probably That's fine. Uh, colleagues are afraid to ask questions in English. So if, if this is a fact, you can ask them uh, in Russian and I will translate them. So no worries yeah. about this. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I also I want to say thank you for the uh, great joke about the TDD. <laughs> it was actually <laughs> it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> but yes um but yeah um <laughs> you're welcome i i, I like I, i've done this workshop a few times before like again uh, this is a relatively short time i have for, for this entire workshop so i had to be a bit fast so if something you if you missed something that i talked about the github location is always available um 
And uh, I, I believe there's a recording of me somewhere talking about similar things on CDK. So just search my name on YouTube. You should, it should pop up as well. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And if you're interested in the presentation itself, I think I, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll share it with you. Uh, absolutely. Um, but yeah. Um, hope you really enjoy that. And if you have any questions, let me know. Yep. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you very now much. Now we have, uh, oh, we have, a, we have a questions, uh, a first one. So please help us a little bit with it. So uh, is it okay uh, that you have a lot of warnings uh, in console during execution uh, as a common NPM install? Uh, so this is something to do if I do like, okay, you'll see this. Um, yeah, it's okay, right? If you do npm install, one of the things that will happen, it will just warn you that some potential um, um, potential node modules, for example, it says, "Hey, no repository field set." Like if I don't have, if I go to my package JSON, you will see that I have no repository field set in my package JSON. Of course, in a, if this was a production application, you would, you know, do repository. Uh, uh, like this, you know, add your repository URL, right? Those kind of things. Um, there's also sometimes when it comes to dependencies on all certain packages that like this package works better with this dependency. It's not the worst thing in the world. If, if you get an error, of course, that that's broken. But for production, if you're pushing this code to production, um, you just want to make sure that this is um, okay. Because mind you, the MP, this NPM code that is showing up here, this is not part of your application per se. This is not part of my hello world JavaScript. This is just part of my CDK. And this is required for you to deploy your application, but uh, it will not break anything production side. So not no access to customer data or anything like that. So I, I'm not too concerned about that. Thank you for your answer. Uh... Yep. Please, uh, guys, in case you will have any additional questions, you are free to contact Darko directly. You can see all his uh, um, social networks and other contacts. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I should have reached about. Uh, yeah, again, please do. And uh, I would like to thank you all for giving the opportunity to speak at this event. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I, I hope you all enjoy this. And. Uh, Sometime soon, maybe in some, maybe even in person at one point, uh, we get to meet uh, at some future event.